two, one, go. Alright. Yo, what is up? Uh, it's Tempo, or Thomas, what do you want to call me? Um, I had Spook send me this replay, so I'm going to take a look at it. Um, we're going to start in Craze POV, and we'll go through them. Actually, hold on, let me do this real quick. Alright. Uh, let's see. So, first of all, See how you guys are doing kickoffs. That's fine. Um, what I kind of like to do on this kickoff as well is what she can do is so left's obviously going for the ball. What he can do is he can come in here and cheat, and we can have Kev go for this corner boost. Because then, if pink is the ball, off of this 50-50, Frank can look to lose this here, and then Kev can come up and play this ball. I mean, that's another way to do this. Um, I'll take a picture of it, just so you guys have it. But um, That's another good way to do it. I kind of like playing it like that as well. That's one of my favorites. Um, give me one second. But yeah, that's uh, another way to go about this. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go back in. I mean, this is fine too. I don't have a problem with this. Um, cheat wise, yeah, cheat's perfect. That's fine. Nice. Good. Good beats. Curry's coming back. So Spook's playing second and Kev, you're playing first. This is fine. Um, here? Um, sorry. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, that's why. Okay, sweet. Um, Oh, <laughs> there we go. Alright, so you play this ball. After this, I think you should just get out of here. I think what you should do is, I'm um, playing as you. I think I should be able to. Okay. So you go for this. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. So you beat him here. Once you're down here, just get this boost and get out. I say that because, um, if you look at this from Spook's POV at least, so you get that good touch, that's good. I mean, it's just pushing into corners, not really doing a whole bunch, but it's fine. But once you take this boost, just a replay glitch, in Spook's opinion, it's a lot better for him just to get this touch and go, and you leave, because he's already committed himself. He's a little bit overcommitted. If anything, he should be further back into like, He should be further back into like here. So if we play this from Spook's POV. So if I'm Spook, right? Driving, driving, driving. I'd flip right here and then I'd just hang out right here by this mid boost. And you see how if we let Griffith get that touch, he's able to go up the wall and play it. Pretty easy shot on or something in mid for his Cray. That's, that's the only thing I see, really. Because this touch is good. I'm happy with this touch. Because you beat him pretty clean. It's not really achieving a ton. So if we're going to be really nitpicky, so you play the cheat with that. There's not really a whole lot you can really do. I mean, you can play it more to the corner off this wall, because then if that ball plays off here, you can control it a little bit better. But, I mean, I don't really have a huge problem with how you played it. So you get this mid. I just I just don't think you need to go for the ball again. I think if you're... Let's see. Flip this challenge. Go. So land. Get this boost and get out. Then that way you just let Spook play the ball while you're rotating back. And then you can let Cray go too. But I'm being super nitpicky with that. We'll go to Cray. Okay. Um, wait. That's not Cray. <laughs> there we go. 
So we get this mid boost. Um, you don't need a flip there. You're fine here. Here it's actually good to keep the whiff. So stay. Let's see. So I'll play from your POV as well. So if I get this boost, I'm just gonna hang out here. Hang out really wide. Just relax. Just because once you get yourself super into the play, it makes itself it makes it a lot more difficult. Right? Because if we just hang out here, even, even if we're not like super it's fine if Griffith gets a touch because we've spooked a chow for us. So it's not the end of the world. I just don't think we need to be super, super close there. But honestly, I don't, I don't have a huge problem with what you do here. This is fine to cut across. But I would mention that since both your teammates are... So if we're going to do this real quick. Paint you a little picture. I'll explain this. So the way I like to think about Rocket League is that we're splitting the field into three quadrants. Playing... So there's a left side. Oh, that's a terrible line. Oops, hold on. Okay, so we have the left side. And then we've got the central side. I really just split them based on the goal posts. That's the easiest way. And then we've just got um, just got right. And then we've got center. So the way I like to think about this is that so Cray, you'll be yellow here. So if we go back on the play, you play this rotation in to here. And basically the way, since you're rotating as third man, the way this works is you're supposed to be timing this challenge between Kev and I believe it's Griffith on the other team so that you are crossing this yellow line as the challenge happens. Um, I'm not sure if that makes a ton of sense. I can try and find a replay that I do that. But... Um, Basically, these are called the lines of, um, what are they called? The, the back post and front post lines. Basically saying that you always want to be crossing back post on the line as the challenge comes. Because then, just to paint a little picture. So if we're rotating in here, right, as third, and this ball gets somehow pinched boomed, it's a lot easier to make this save if we're crossing this as the ball comes because then we're able to have a better chance of going up and then challenging out the ball. Um, it just gets it gets really hairy when we start to force rotations fast. You actually do a really good job of that here because you time this really well. Um, the only thing I don't like about this play is, even if we're going to split it in half, um, you're the only player over here, and there's two teammates over here, both in the other team's corner, so you're really the only guy back. Um, the risk here is that if this guy plays smart, he can, he's going to kill you, and then Griff's going to have a free touch into net, and he's probably going to have a free roll. Um, so that's why I think it's important to stay kind of wide here and deep and just let Spook and Kev play off the ball and hopefully get a good touch middle. I mean, that's really the only thing you can play is because here you're just playing worst-case scenario. Um, this might be a little bit basic for you guys, but just simple rolls. At first, man, you're just playing forces just forcing something to happen so that can really be um, forcing could be um, let's think so it could be a pass so like a pass to your second man it could be a 50 50 right same kind of idea there um, or you can be just like a shot on net just something you're forcing the other team to do something with the ball or force out a save. Second, um, second you're going to be playing the um, you're going to be playing the force, right? So you're going to be either taking a shot or just f you know, kind of just creating pressure. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. It's just a lot of the same thing. Um, basically, once you do that, then you have the ability to let your third man come in. Um, and then I'll, I'll simplify this even further in a second. So third, we're kind of just playing cleanup. And then this is going to branch into what I wanted to say. You're playing the worst case scenario, which I'll mention a lot, and I'm just going to call it WCS. So basically, WCS is the worst thing that can possibly happen. So let's think. In this situation, as third, there's not really a whole lot that can happen really bad because you're so deep, it's good. Um, you could have like a cucks pinch, right? So like a pinch on a net, I guess. That would be a terrible thing to happen. You could have 
Griffith kill both your teammates, so then you're back on a 2v1. I mean, that's a good example of something that could happen that's really bad. Um, there's not really a whole lot else. Um, uh, maybe it's just a dangerous touch into this area, right? Because then loss can come and play, and it's really dangerous for you. So we could say uh, a bad touch from teammate. And yeah, that's really the whole idea, is that we're just covering the worst case scenario as third. Okay, and then to branch off into that a little bit more, the next kind of idea with that for um, second man this time is that you're playing the best case scenario. So you guys don't really have a second man here just because you're playing a defensive play. So we can look at it from the other team's POV. So Griffith is their third first. Lost is technically their third, but he's going to rotate up, I would assume, if we watch this playback. He's going to rotate into here into second man, and then Griff will be somewhere around here. Um, and then technically, um, uh, Rakage, I'm not really sure how to say that. Um, he's their extension, but we'll go into that in a little bit deeper depth when I see an opportunity to. Um, but basically, the idea of extension is that that's kind of the in-between, between first and third. That's the in-between. Um, I don't want to get super into it right now just because it's not really a good play for it, but I'll try and highlight an example of an extension. So basically to review <laughs> why I have this really long tangent is because you're the only player on this left side of the field. I think it's really important for you to stay on the left and let your two teammates rotate back on the right side. Just because it's really hard for them to get a good back post rotation here because it just takes so much more extra time than that. Because if we do let this play roll out, um, let's see. If we let this play roll out, you see how now all three of you are on the same side of the field. So if we're going to go more into depth here. You guys are literally all in the exact same spot. Um, Kev is on the wall because he just challenged. That's also why I don't think you need to make that challenge. Because if you do go back here, then suddenly you're probably like right around here. And you're probably going to get a kill on him. So I know that's a little bit of replay, you know, 2020 vision. But if you do have full boost and you're getting a kill on him, that's a lot more beneficial for your team because you're killing their rotate back instead of forcing this ball into the wall and putting yourself out of the play for like 15 plus seconds. It just makes a lot more sense. Um, in addition to this, so you, you're playing this here. Now, even more so than the half and half rule, you guys are all near post on the ball. So if you if you do lose this challenge, which this is a pretty easy challenge to lose if Griffith, because he looks like he's closer to the ball than you too, right? So if he goes and plays this around you, like off the wall or something, you're pretty screwed here. <laughs> um, basically, if this gets over your head, this is a goal, 1,000%. Because this kid can rotate in and play this off of the wall, and then he gets a free shot. Just a lot of bad can happen by rotating and pushing up into this. Whereas if you're back into like here still, playing this slow, yes, he gets control on the ball, but Spook can come and chow for you. It's really important to use the people that are already on the side of the field and rotate and use this and use the space in a way that so that you're on the left and both your teammates are on the right. They're already there. There's nothing you can change about it. Let them chow for you as first men. And force. This is a good example of a force because I think Spook does go. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back into the replay. Let's see. We're only eight seconds in. Um, sorry, I'm gonna be super in depth just because it's a lot easier just to do that. Um, and I know that you guys won this replay, but as you can see, there's tons of mistakes in like literally every second of the game. So it's good to look at. I'm gonna try and make this about an hour. So uh, let me open this on my other screen just so I kind of have an idea. Okay. Just so I don't go too. I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So you get a good challenge here. That's fine. That's why this play doesn't develop anymore. Because if we play this from Griffith. So if we're Griffith in this POV, it's a pretty hard beat, but if, even if he gets a 50, I think Spook gets back. Um, Spook, I think you're too close. I think you should be more into this area. So if we're going back to where you were, you were up in like here. This would be a good opportunity to take um, boost pads. You could even go like this, right? It's really basic. It's not like super complicated. Um, 
in this situation too, I mean, I don't mind this rotate back because, like I said, if Craig gets beat, at least you're there in his vicinity. Um, but yeah, there's not really a whole lot you can do. I don't mind this. I would prefer you to be just a little bit wider maybe and take the suicide pads here. Um, let me give you a little bit of basics. So these are suicide pads. Then I call these the hourglass pads. These ones. They don't really look like an hourglass. It's just the way it, it just makes sense in my head. All Okay, so the blue will be at the hourglass. It's like a reverse hourglass, if anything, I guess. Um, pink is the suicide pads. And then there's the the oh man I'm screwed pads which are usually like a pad line like this like if I'm like here I'll go around this grab boost and get in the back post that's another way to do it I'll put them on the other side as well I think I missed some of them but you get the point um, and honestly I don't even really mind it I'm like a lot of people don't like when you go for big pads but I go for big pads all the time and I like it so even if you did this rotate I would have been fine with that as long as you were fast about it because then at least you're still going to get back because there's not going to be a whole lot of velocity off this because technically you should cover for this pinch but I mean if this pinches into your net there's not really a whole lot you can do either way so just basically just be just give yourself more space because the way I like to think about this is if you're over here compared to there you can see just how much more space you have and that just means time right time is equal to space if you're further away from the ball you have so much more space than the ball I would say this difference is the difference between saving like a really hard shot and not saving it because if we're on this line you're hoping the ball is literally like above you or maybe to the right if it's anywhere tucked into this corner or this corner it's just unsavable I mean it's not exactly super savable if you're here but at least you give yourself the opportunity to be able to turn left into this top corner and turn right into this top corner. But yeah, that's just something tiny. I think that if you do this too, you'll probably end up out with more boost. I'm curious to see what your boost situation is as well. 66, that's not bad. Yeah, let's go back. Let's watch the play again. So he gets a good touch. Um, I think what you can do here, Spook, like I said, um, you're already making the rotate, just just take the boost, just go. It could be replay glitched where there's not a boost pad up, but if that is up, I don't, I mean, yes, this is technically the correct rotation, right? Because of the mini pads, everybody loves those, but I think it makes more sense just to grab the big and then go. And then as a good rule of thumb, on a, um, so we're at 449. Let me try and find a replay real quick. Let me see if I have any replays on this. Um, I should be able to find something pretty good. Um, I'll give you an example of a good third man. Because there's like a specific way I think that people should rotate out of third. And it's probably why I missed replay. Let's see. Let's go forward a little bit. So once we're playing here. Yeah. Okay. This would be a good example. So if we go into atomic POV. He's going to watch uh it's not the best it's just farming the boost um let's see who's last here for them probably connor yeah he's second so he plays out so when you're here watch how they just always flip once as third it's a good example i mean just to make it even simpler um, I would think I have settings set up on this account. <laughs> yeah, but basically when you're going back, just flip out once. That's the easiest way to do it. Man, I don't have any settings or setup. Okay, let's go back to the replay. We're at 4.49, so. So you play the challenge. I don't have a problem with you cutting across here. That's fine. Um, Kev, you just got to get out of the play, man. 
I just think you're in the play for way too long. Just, just get out. <laughs> like, here, your options are, it's pretty easy. The boost pads are almost, like, pretty much written for you. Just do that. Just Once you get out of that play, because then it makes it less sticky for Kray. Because in Kray's POB, he's probably playing this up. I don't think he has the boost to reach it. But at least he can go up the wall and play a 50 with Lost. It's a lot easier for him. Whereas when you start to... Um, when you start to evolve yourself into this play, oh man, it's not gonna work. Um, look how look how hectic it gets for Cray because now he's bumping you. I think he does bump you. Let's see, yeah, or I guess you bump into him really. So if we're watching this from here, um, one second, let me just turn this off. Okay, so once he plays this here. That's not the best touch. Um, if we're going to be nitpicky mechanically, what you can do is you, can, you don't have to turn right there. Just go straight into the ball and just double tap. Just double jump. Because then you can play it off the wall and land on the wall. You see how your rotation here makes it really awkward for him? Because you end up bumping him and this whole play just breaks down. This is fine. I'll watch from the POVs for a little bit. I don't have a problem with this, but Lost is right there, so it's a little bit of a dangerous touch. I like that you stay close to get a 50. Um, it's just a little bit dangerous. You get that, that's fine. That's over. Okay, this is just communication. I don't know if you guys even calm or what, but I can't really tell. I can't really say anything about it just because I can't hear them. So this is just communication. This is technically Spook's ball, but I don't have a problem with either of you going for this. All the space is on that side, so... I mean, the pinch works out as well. Is there a camera shake on? There is. That looks better. So this is good. This is a good example of a flip out. You don't even have to boost there. Just You can just flip out and just chill. So what I like to call this, the honey zone for third man is about, about right where you are actually. So if I'm playing third, and I'm coming out from the back. I like to be in this zone. You see these pad, this pad line, and this pad line. If I'm around here as third, I'm pretty comfy. Because regardless of what happens, even if Griffith somehow gets like a crazy psycho coming back, right? I can just turn and just play it pretty easily. That's literally the worst case thing is that he Griffith is somehow insane. Um, other than that, what's probably gonna happen on this play is you're gonna play it over here or dribble it into like down here on accident. Let's see what happens. Yeah, just plays it right into the right into the middle for Spook. That should be a goal. Close. Yeah, it is. Nice. So this is a good example of um of a third. I like this. This is good because you give your teammate space and you just patrol the line. This is perfect. Because even if they do get beat and they play this ball over, you're there. Yeah, you're fine. So even if this does, yeah. You're fine. This is perfect. Kev, I, I, I just think you're staying in the play a little bit too long here. You don't get the touch or anything. You still boost, but you're not really technically the extension. Let's see what's happening. So we chow there. There's really no need to chow. I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to cover the shot, but it's better to cover the shot from the net than anything else. Because even if you do get a good 50 here, it's not really going to achieve a whole lot. You're much better just sitting here and relaxing. Just sit. I can go back a little bit. This is a good, almost, yeah, no, this is fine. Just play like here. Just relax. Because then you get, you get the easiest touch out of all of them. Or if you let your teammates go, you can hang out here and then look. See how much faster you are to the ball. I just think you're, you're just rushing the play a little bit. You're just playing to play. Once this happens and both your teammates double commit, you need to be getting back. Like, you should just be... I mean, I don't really have a problem with going up because it works out perfect. But just in case they do, like, 50 or something, if you're here, then at least you get you get first touch on the second one. And then here, it just looks like you're just trying to force it, which is fine. If you get a little bit more speed here, you can probably get a bump. 
If you just flip into him there, that's a bump. That's a lot better for your team. I don't know why he tried to go for Psycho, but he did. This is a good rotation. Because as the extension, this I like this a lot. This is what you call a Justin cut. When you cut off of that back boost, then Gim come in mid. He's going to get a free shot. That's good. Because even if that does drop off the backboard, you get a really easy shot. This is a good cut. And Kray, you see how when Kray's playing deep, you're able to extend like that? This is a good example of an extension. Oh, we can look at it. Take a look at the extension. Because you can see just how deep Cray is. That's why deep thirds are so important. So, in this play, um, it's a little bit goofy because of Spook. So, it's a pretty pretty basic one. There isn't a whole lot of 3 2 1 action going on. You're the extension. Cray is very much the third. And then. I'm a little bit torn on what Spook is. I want to say he's a second in this. But I could also see that he's the first. But, I don't know, it's kind of a weird because he dunks him. But, either way. So, when you're the extension, I'm not sure if this is a new topic for you guys or not, but I'll send you guys a video as well. A little YouTube. That helps a lot. Um, your goals are boost. Oh, that's not how you spell boost. Demos. And cuts can also look to play passes. Um, let's not play fast pace in the field. Let's see if I can move it a little bit. There we go. See it a little bit better. Um, so basically, from this situation, if I'm going to point out every little thing you could do, just to be over, over specific. All right, one, you can kill him, right? Two, you've already taken the boost. That's good. What you can do now is you can look to cut across the thing, take their other boost, and then come back and rotate. You see how certain things, like when you cut across the midfield, when you're the extension, one of your main priorities is to cut across. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, that's where the people are, right? The people are in the midfield, so when you go to kill in the midfield, that's the best place. I'll just... Writing it. So that's where the people are. Two boost steals. In order to steal the boost, you have to cut across the middle. Because if we're here and we want this, have to cut across. And then third, and this is why it's so good and so this is why pretty much everybody's doing it. Is because um uh you, you rotate straight into third. It's really easy. And you rotate back post. Um I'm just gonna call BP back post just for future reference. So when you cut across like that, you're already coming back into third so that when Spook goes up and Cray can rotate pretty naturally. So let's say this doesn't work out into a goal and this ball's like up here, Spook plays it, plays out the backboard. He's the first, and then Cray rotates up into second and probably gets a free goal because of it. And then that's when it's important for you. Because either if you go for the kill, right, we'll go back into that. So you can get this kill. If you go past that, you can get this kill on this guy. You could get this boost deal over here. But regardless of what you do, if we're going to go yellow for the perspective path, you're, oh, that's not yellow. You're always going to be back. You're always ending up on this back post line. Because if you go here, back post. If you go here, back post. See what I mean? That's why it's so good to cut across the field. Because regardless of what you do, you're always going to be back post. It's important. Okay, let me do that as well. All right, let's get back into it. That's a good example of an extension, though. I like this cut a lot. It's smart. Because Cray is playing so deep that if you look at your if you look at your spacing, there's so much space because Cray's playing a really good third and is facing correctly. So that if he gets beat, he's got you covered. He can come into here and play that ball pretty easily. But 
if they have like a 50 and it drops down into like an advent in an advantageous position, you're there and you have them all beat and you have a free goal. So, this is really good. This is a perfect third. This is a perfect extension. This is a really good second man. So, well done you guys. This is this is very good. All right. Let's go back into it. Yeah, we get a goal. Nice. Let's see what this kickoff is. So, I want to see what you guys do first before I look at say anything. Okay. These kickoffs, um, there's, there's just you just have to do them this specific way. So you go, All right? That's fine. Cray, you have to cheat here. Cheat up into there. Uh, to f you can just do like a one flip, and you'll end up like right around here every time. And then spook, you just go for the back boost, and then you're supposed to. So technically, you're supposed to turn. Well, you're supposed to face and just watch. So I, what I do is I don't flip on these kickoffs. I just drive. Because by the time I get there, I'm about there as that conflict is happening on the ball. And if it spits out here, then I obviously go up. But if it spits out here over my cheat, I can still turn and get back. So, to review, just boom, boom, boom. Let's save this one as well. Because let's see if you guys get punished for it. You probably won't, but a little bit. So if we look, if you're the one cheating here, you have a free touch here and you beat him. You can play it off the wall and you probably get a goal. Maybe not a goal, but you get a lot of really early pressure. Because also, because you're about like right here right now, you beat him to this because he's recovering off of kickoff. Um, and then once you do that, you can play it into here. And then now you have Griffith in a really awkward spot where he's got to play every option, which he's not going to because he's a champ. You can just bang this off his own backboard, and I guarantee he'll fly right by. And you probably have a free goal if Spook's following, which he is. So that's why it's really important to cheat. Always, always cheat. Good. This is good. Kev, you can go further back. Give your teammate space. Oh, shoot. You go in here, this is fine. But I'd rather you be around this line. The further back, the better. Because then, just because at this rank, you don't know what's going to happen on the ball. Like, this could just pinch off of that corner and then play over Cray's head. And then this is, I mean, this is probably still gettable for you, depending on how you play this line. Um, let's see before I say anything more. Let's see if you cross. Ooh. Okay, yeah. You just got to play third here. You got to trust your teammates enough to let them do their thing. So, what else you could do is... Actually, I'll just... I'm just going to zoom and show you easier. Okay. So, I'll go back. So, we play here, right? I'm taking this boost. I'm just chilling here. Hanging out, playing slow, just waiting. I think you just need to be a little bit deeper back as third. That's the main critique that I'm seeing. It feels like you're trying to force too much stuff to happen. Okay, we'll, we'll go back to the POVs for a little bit. Go back. Actually, we'll switch from Cray. We'll go to Kev. Good. Okay, so for kickoffs, you want to stay in the center circle. Um, we can teach you guys how to flip kickoff as well. I can teach you how to speed flip. When we're all playing together, I'll try and help. So here, just take that boost and hang out in the midfield. You don't need to rush out. Because if you hang out in the midfield, it gives Cray more options. Because he's further back. Yeah, here you guys should you guys should get punished here. Because look how forward... Okay, yeah, you adjust. Kind of. You're just a little bit too close. Uh, that's just unlucky. You just flip, but yeah. You know that. Play into the back post. It's fine. This is all good. 
Um, it's just a little bit hectic between Kray and Spooked, but it's good because you play, you just stay back. It's just awkward. Flip out, it's fine. Uh, I don't think you need to flip actually. You can just play slower because if you look, you see how over pushed you are. This is an example of what happens when you over push the third, because then you're not able to keep the momentum. You have to get hard touches like that. Good. This is good. This is all. Good. This is all fine. I don't. I don't mind that blue steal. Um, you cut your teammate pretty bad here. I'm pretty sure Spook has a play, but he's got to play back because you go up. Yeah, this is just another example, Kev, where you're just staying in the play for a little bit too long. You can get this boost and then just leave. Just flip out. Because you're not really going to be able to provide much because they're going to bang it over your head regardless. The only thing you're doing to yourself is you're making it more difficult to get back. Because you're spending more time in the in the play than you need to. Yeah, and you're cutting him again. I guarantee from his POV it looks like you're just cutting, cutting, cutting. This is probably from Cray. Let's see. I could be wrong. No, this is fine. I'm fine with that, Kev. That's a good cut up. Mm. I think you go back here. You're beat. Yeah. I mean, it works out because Spook is playing super deep, but there's no reason to push this. If you, I mean, I guess you force, but... Nothing's getting by Spook here, so you're better off just playing a third man with him. Um, Spook, you can take time here. You can probably dribble. You can just relax for a second. You don't need to just bang this. But, I mean, at the same time, I don't mind the bang that much. You could also look to play this down the right side for Kev. But I don't mind that for Cray either. Good try on the bump. Nice. Good boost steal. So you get beat here. Um, you get a bump. Just go for that bump on hero, because this isn't really applying much to the play. If anything, it'd actually probably be better if you don't get that touch. Let's see from Kray's POV. I mean, it's probably easier for Kray if you don't get that touch, but that's just unlucky. It's not your fault. That's just unlucky. Now you get back. That's good. Yeah, I don't mind you going all the way back for boost. It's fine. You chow here. Um, that's just an unlucky cookie, but that's fine. Good. That's a really good touch. I like that. Um, I just think you're just playing way too much because, I mean, this is fine. I think Kray should stay down, if anything. Let's see. So we play here. It's fine. Um, so technically you're going back post right now, but if we have the game sense to understand, the play is moving to the other direction, so technically back post would actually be opposite, so it would actually be left. Because you can see the flow of the play moving to the right side of the field. That's You don't need to turn like that. You just go back. So if I'm playing from your POV on that one, just play here. It's just way smoother. And you give yourself more space on the ball. So now if we're like hanging out here, see how much easier that save is. So yeah. You take away all your own spacing. And because of that, you force a save out of Spook again. Oof, almost a double. Um, what are you supporting in? Yeah. This is fine. That's just mechanics. It's fine. Let's see if there's anything else you can do. Here, you see Kev going back, so yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that's just mechanical error. Unless you're playing the dunk, which you shouldn't be. You should just be shooting this. But uh, it's just mechanics. It's a good rotate. This is a suicide pad rotate, kind of. 
the 50. Oh, is that just in? Good bump. Wait, is that your own teammate? <laughs> yeah, it is. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> what a 50. Um, I think you're trying to speed flip. It's a little bit off, but we can figure that out. I'm not worried. Let's see what you guys do on this kickoff. So, this is actually a weird one. This is kind of up to you guys. There's two ways you can do this. I'll draw it and let's see what happens. How I like to do this one is I like to let Spook go up because he gets that extra 12 pad. Um, and he gets more space on the cheat. And then Kev has to do the awkward one back to the boost. And then Crate obviously just goes for the kickoff and hopefully tries to lose to this quadrant of the field. Let's see what happens. So, um, okay, um, a rule of thumb for kickoffs, for pretty much every kickoff, uh, you have to, so, you have to be covering your backside. So, if he's on the right, you have to go for this boost. If he was over here, then you have to go for this boost. It's basically you're playing, you split the field up into fours. This is our quadrant, and this is the quadrant we're going to lose the kickoff into. So we have to be doing things to help us with that, which it is go for this boost. And that's for every single one. So even if, like even if we're playing twos here, right, and Kray's not here, and let's just say we're not cheating on the kickoff for twos, we're always losing it into this quadrant because he's going for the kickoff here, and he's going to try and lose this back here. And the reason we do that is for a couple reasons. One, it's a lot safer because when your car is on this side of the field, it cuts out the net for the most part, except for you know the freak shots. So 90% of the time, probably 98% of the time, it's never going into your own net. Um, that, and it's just a lot easier to lose it going this way than it is to lose it this way. I mean, it's doable, but it's a lot harder. Because when we do this, we have to get onto the left side of the ball, which allows them to get a really hard cheat, and it can just pinch into our own net just get a lot of really weird kickoffs. So, as a rule of thumb, always go behind the person that's taking the kickoff. I mean, yeah, it happens though, but you'll forget it, but that's a you'll 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 gain a lot from just doing that. I don't think they didn't even go for the kickoff. The rotation's really weird. Spook, just relax. Just stay further back, closer to that boost. Just hang out. You can also cut into mid. You can play this, rotate up. So you get that boost. Yeah, you can just pretty much just lollygag around till about this point and just hang out like right around here. Because then that gives Kray the chance to go for the ball and Kev to play second. Because you see how awkward it gets, how stuffy. You guys are like all in the same place covering the same thing. So Spook goes in Chow's, that's good. Craig cuts in, yeah, that's fine. That's a really awkward catch. Good 50. Kev bangs up for Cray, nice. Uh, I'm fine with that challenge, that's good. Uh, one of you has to play third and it's Spook. I think Spook's got to be further back. Um, I don't see it exactly, but just hang out in this area again. Let's see. We'll take a look and see. Yeah. Just hang out here. Play slow. Because then he already flipped, so you're not going to be able to get a kill on him. You're third, too. Don't go for bumps when you're third, because by the freak chance that you get demoed, your team's kind of messed up. You don't need a bump there. You can just hang out. Because if you're a little bit slower, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in this play. But if you're around like here. Oh, it 
is going to make a difference because then you get a free child there. Because when you let yourself be deeper, because now if we're hanging out like around here, we get a really free aerial and it beat on everybody in the whole lobby. But instead, Cray has to go for a hero touch. So Kev whiffs. It's fine, it happens. And we're coming from Cray. Yeah, this is not where you want to be. Because now he's got to get a hero touch backwards. Which I think he does. But we don't want to force that out of our teammates. Yeah, it's fine. But you see how if you're a little bit further back, Spook, you get a lot easier. Because look, you're third here and you're in their box. I'm sure if we look at this from the sky, it's going to look pretty uh, questionable. Yeah. <laughs> see exactly how close. You guys are all in the final third. See how much of the field is behind you open. Whereas if you're further back in like this area of the field... You have a lot easier of a time. Get a free touch. You can almost hit it in a replay, view <laughs> replay viewer. Good rotation back. You can go up the wall there. If you're hesitating, just go. It's fine to play the corner. You could do this. Just play that. Boom. I don't have a problem with what you do, but the other team should be better. I don't know what they're doing. What should have happened from them? This is a good example, I guess, of a offense. So if I'm lost, I'm killing you. Boom, you're dead. If I'm... Let's see who else is in this play. I think all three. So loss is the extension here. If I'm him, I'm waiting on that ball and I'm catching it. Because if you catch this and start dribbling at you, you're going to force a child when your teammate's in a good 50. Because I can 50 into this area. And then let a teammate shoot from here. So they just play a really bad offense. And that's why you guys don't get punished. Um, I don't know what happened to Cray. So he gets that. Yeah, you just get bumped. It's fine. Um, you just make it really awkward for yourself. If you just slow down and just drive, you don't have to rush to flip here. You could just do this. Right? You just hang out, and then you can probably get like an air dribble pop touch. If you were gonna. Yeah, you get a pop. And then you could go for an air dribble even. is fine. Oh, free shot. Close. You're second. Uh, you're not. You're third. Spook get out of the play. So once Spook gets out of the play, I mean, this is just mechanics, but that's fine. I'd rather you be there and miss the shot than not be there. Mm, I'm not sure you need to get this touch. Let's think about this. What is the other team going to do here? What, what what touch do they have that's going to be good? They just they don't have a good touch. He, Zero's best touch is into this area, which would be perfect for you to occupy. If somebody's occupying this and Zero gets a touch, like right about there, into like this area, it's a free shot. There's just no need. What you can do instead is once you get that boost, just get out and just let Kev go. Because if we look, Kev's occupying this space. And any good touch here, Kev's just ready to bang. I think what you guys do is you guys get sucked into the corner a lot. A good way to think about it with the corners is that... We'll just ignore the ball for a second. I'll draw you guys a little picture. So, there are different parts of the field that are more advantageous at different parts of the game. And at different points in like possession and things like that. Basically, I like to think about offense in, th in six different parts. So, or I guess not even offense, just the field in general. So we cut the field in half between defense and offense. And then with that, we cut it into three quadrants. We cut it into the corners. 
These are the offensive corners. Call that OC. And then you have the midfield with the center circle. Right? And that's the offensive center circle. Um, actually, that's a better example. Let's call it OM. We'll call it the offensive midfield. So each each spot has its advantages and its disadvantages, depending on where you are. So, and then to piggyback on that, we've got the same thing on defense. We've got these two corners on defense, and then we'll keep it pink for some consistency. Okay, so there are. Um, Then we've got OF or shoot DC for defensive corners, and then DM for defensive mid. So, why do I spend all this time talking about this? So there are points. So we're on offense on this side of the field, right? So where we want the ball here. This is the yes zone. This is the no zone. This is the no zone. We don't want the ball in the corners. The corners are the safest place. So to make it simple, no, yes. We want the ball in the midfield because it's one, it's the closest to the goal and it's the easiest place to shoot from. The only part of the field that we would really want it when we're talking about offense with the no zone is right around like here. Because then we can start up air dribbles and dribbles and just have a bunch of space, but it's obviously, it's not the best. We really want the ball in the midfield when we're on offense, and we don't want the balls in the corner. So the reason I bring this up is because when Kray's challenging up here, Lost is gonna push the ball into the yes zone for us. That's where we want it. Which is why it's counterintuitive because what Kray's gonna do is he's gonna push the ball off of this corner and like into this zone. And as we've established, we don't want the ball here. So his touch is pretty counterintuitive to what we're trying to do. That's why we're better off letting Loss touch the ball into mid, causing cr causing chaos for them, and let Kev go for a shot when it's in the yes zone. Okay, so now that we're going back on defense, it's the exact opposite for us. This is the no, and these two are the yeses. So the reason that we want it in our corners is because it's really easy to defend. If they're on this corner, let's say, oh, let me go back. So let's say we're here, right? Pink is the team with the ball, and they're playing it into the corner. Here's their options. Bang it off the corner and try and get it into our yet into our no zone, right? Get it into here, which they're not gonna be able to do because if we have if anybody on back post here, he can come across and play this out and then boom. Right? Their other option besides that is to just um, go back further. And they start into, if you remember this little semicircle I brought up, if they're playing it in from here, and they're starting to dribble into our no, here's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have our first man coming in from here, near post, and able to cut this ball off and play it out into here. Or let's say our first man whiffs, the, the dribbler is already awkward, and then our back man can go in and challenge. So this is the worst case scenario, is if they do get it into the bad zone, but as long as they're dribbling, we're going to have people to ch chow them. So that's fine. And then piggybacking on th off of that, the last thing they can really do off of this would be like an infield pass to try and get in into there. Or like a dribble, whether the right side of the ball, side flip, and then try and play it into here for a shot. But it's just not going to be possible because we're going to have the right people. Because when we play defense, so if I'm going to set up my perfect defensive structure, you've got person rotating into back right into third you've got somebody rotating into mid to cover this zone right so if we're talking about zonal structure the midfield is that zone right here this is going to be covering the net and covering shots we'll call that the goal zone 
and then we're going to have somebody else probably coming from near post to cover the backboard because it's a lot easier uh, maybe not that wide maybe if they're coming into like here they can double into either doing the midfield or defend the greater backboard area for balls that come off of the backboard like here because it's a lot easier to read the backboard going forward as you guys know so it's just a basic kind of thing about how zoning works and the six zones on the field. Um, let me finish this out real quick and then I'll send a picture. Oh wait. Oh wait. <laughs> I'm completely backwards. Oh yes. And that's just basically just this area it look nice and good. And then the corners here. Okay, that should be pretty easy to see. And then you can see the stark difference between what we want and what we don't want. Take a picture of this as well. Shoot. Okay. Sorry, that might be a little bit, a um, little bit. I don't think complicated is the right word, but that might be a little bit too in depth for um, a pretty simple little play. But that's kind of how we have to think about it because now, hopefully, that makes it more sense. Because you see how we're just pushing it into the corner, versus if we watch, um, who was it? This guy. See how when he's going to touch this? Look where he's playing this. He's playing this into the midfield for us. Just let the other team make mistakes and p punish them for those mistakes. Give them the opportunity. Instead of playing it into their corner. Because look how safe this is. They just misplay it. See how much more relaxed we are when it's in our corner? There's really no threat. But now, once it's here, you see how we all panic? Look at this panic. Everybody's going for it because it's already in the mid. Just let the ball hang out in the corner when we're on defense, and don't let it hang out in the corner when we're on offense. Keep it nice and simple. This is good. Good pass. Close. Good idea. I like this. The only thing you can do to make this pass a little bit easier for him, Trey, is just to, uh, because you're not really, there's not really a whole lot of pressure. You have tons of time. What you can do is when you, when you're right here. Get to the right of the ball. Let's see, I'll try and get, I'll try and stop it on the freeze frame that we hit it. Okay. What you can do is you can just drive up a little bit slower, and then jump. Oh, I just pressed A. <laughs> Hold up. So when we're here, we just jump into it like this. We don't have to flip, or we can get it like on this and then flip forward into here and give just so we give Kev a shot. It's it's a little bit difficult to explain in replay. So I won't dawdle on it. And we'll finish out the replay in Spook. POB, we haven't looked at him yet. Oh wait, switch, no. There we go. Wait, why did it switch? Did Spook lag out or something? <laughs> what? Um, why did it switch? Good. It's a good chow. Here you're playing a really good third. This is a good example of just just keeping your space and letting yourself have the time to chow. You probably get a goal because of it. That's fine. I'm fine with this. Once you play this, you could just get out. Or what I would do is I would go for a bump on Griffith. You probably beat him to the bump if you go like full force into it, or at least you make it awkward for him by getting across with him. Instead, you let him clear out. But that's still a plus play. Let's see. You rotate into third. This is a good cut. Because you know Kev's behind you, so you're fine. Trey's probably rotating back. This is fine, but you guys are on the same side of the field. I would have liked it if you went a little bit wider. We're here. You can do this. Oh my god. You can go and play into here. doesn't really matter. 
It's a goal either way. I think that's the forfeit. So, to review, um, I feel like the main points I wanted to go over were the zoning structure of playing the corners versus playing the midfield. Um, and I'll send screen caps of those. Um, kickoffs, we got a good touch on. Third man, I think we touched on pretty good. Um, I'm going to send a video slash like video series that I really liked on positional play slash extensions and all that good stuff. Um, it'll only take you like 30 minutes to watch all the videos and they'll help a ton. Uh, those are the ones I kind of like <laughs> grew up on, I guess, for when I was trying to get good at the game. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm not, I didn't really go super into mechanics just because it's pretty hard to do it in a replay. Um, and I didn't want to go super far into just... I don't know, like super nitpicky stuff. But um, to review, I think you guys have good third bands. Um, I do think you guys have moments where you lose your third band and it gets a little bit awkward because of it. So what I would really recommend doing is being a little bit smarter about your thirds to um, try and identify when you're third versus when you're not. And a really easy way to do that actually is, let me just see if I can do it on this exact play. So I'll start with Kev. Kev's second man. Trace first man, and Spook is, okay, so this is an example of a bad situation, because you guys are all, let's see if I can find a more random, oh, why did it do that, oh, one second, let me just get this up, ah, that's why, so, this is a really easy way to tell, let me try and get an example, It's a little bit tricky. Let me see if I can find something. Man, you guys are just so good. <laughs> you guys like your extensions. It's making it tough to find the, the right time. Okay, here we go. This is perfect. So this is a little bit outdated, but it still works. It's just basic principles. So. If we're identifying first, second, and third, I know I went into depth on what each do, but it's also important to understand when um, when you're each, and I know it can be a little bit difficult to figure that out. So here, if we're in Craze POV, we see zero teammates, which means we're first man, right? So what I like to do is I just do the amount of teammates you see. So amount of teammates right so the amount of teammates on your screen plus one and that equals your position or slash roll I guess to make that basic <laughs> I guess if we're using the formula here you see zero teammates and we just add one because that's the constant and that equals first man and I'll explain that as we go through each of the um, different ones. So, just to make an easy screen cap, uh, that's another good color. This is first because zero teammates. Let me check that for you guys. Boom. And now we'll go into um, his next Kev. So, if we go to Kev, we see one teammate, which equals second man, right? Because we see him, that one plus one equal to two, right? Nice and simple. And I'll take a screenshot of that as well. Um, and then to wrap it up, if we go to Spook, we see two teammates. So, since we see one, two, two teammates, that is equal to third. So, it's pretty basic. It's just two plus one equals three, one plus one equals two. 0 plus 1 equals first. Yeah, that's just a really easy way to do it. That's the way I like to look about it. 
um, I had a really hard time figuring this out at, at the start when I was first starting to understand how rotations and things work. So this is a really good and easy way to do it. Um, so I'd highly recommend it. Um, and it'll just simplify things. Just because if I'm going to go into more depth about how to play each position, it's really important to understand what those positions actually look like on a field first. Just so you can identify when you're in each. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, I don't really have a whole bunch else to go over with. Um, I'd love to look at more replays if you have more. Um, and then as we do scrims and stuff, I'll also have those replays to look at. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to be sending a spreadsheet out at some point. I'll probably send you guys a text message too. Um, if you guys can fill that out, that'd be great, just so I know you guys' availability. And then hopefully we can play some more games. Um, I can hop in there with you guys. We can play threes. We can do live replay reviews, which I like better than recorded replay reviews. Just because then I get a little bit of your guys' mentality slash mindset on certain things. Like why you go for balls. Like I can ask, um, like in this kind of play, I can ask, um, why'd you go for that? Why are you rotating back? Why are you trying to touch this instead of bump? Things like that. Um, and it helps me get a better gauge of where you're at as a player slash what you're actually thinking and not just actually doing. So, yeah, I'll be sending out that spreadsheet in a little bit just to figure that out with all my other teams. And, um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Um, if you watch to the end, thank you. Um, and I'm also going to link a little spreadsheet slash, or not spreadsheet, uh, a Google Doc with a bunch of training packs and pictures from this. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll send out a little announcement at some point today to let you guys know. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.